Hi there, this is Sorely Loves Lost and I do indeed love Speedway also. Um, this is going to be um, a couple of parts um, video preview of the 2010 Premier League season. Uh, this is January the 25th um, 2010 and the Premier League season is set to um, be underway in March. Um, and all the Premier League teams are complete. All teams have seven riders to go to tapes in March. So I thought the time was right to look at a few of the teams that I like and a few of the stories that I would like to raise for the Premier League season. Um, I did indeed um, do a 10 minute rundown of um, a few of the teams, um, but it seems to have disappeared. So, um, without repeating myself, um, not that you would know, but I would know, um, going over the same stuff again, um, for your benefit, that would be, I would be bored and you would be bored. So I've realised now that I'm just going to go through a couple of stories um, that I'd like to raise, a couple of issues that I'd like to raise and um, go through some of my favourite teams uh, for the title, some of my favourites for the title, um, which do include my favourite team, my Premier League team, White House. Okay, so the story that I'd like to raise first, the issue that I'd like to raise first, is Birmingham going with no British riders, six Aussies um, and one American in their seven strong lineup. Um, they've put together an all, all together um, strong lineup. Um, looks like a handy team. Um, they start off with Steve Johnston on an 8.84 average. Um, he came down from the Elite League last season with Somerset uh, in the Premier League, decided that it was right to drop down into the Premier League. He was with Somerset last season and he was one of the elite performers in the Premier in 2009. 2010 comes along and he joins Birmingham. This is a team with, as I said before, no Brits. Um, Jason Lyons is the next rider down in the averages on an 8.02, which is a handy backup to Steve Johnston. And it said, he said in the Speedway Star this week, he said, sorry about that, he said in the Speedway Star this week that he was relishing the prospect of battling his countryman Steve Johnston for that number one spot and that will be a mouthful only prospect for any Birmingham fan. Then we have Richard, Richard Sweetman and Aaron Summers both on six point averages, two more Aussies. Chris Kerr, the American in this team, he might feel out of place with six Aussies but there'll be a lot of team spirit. I mean Aussies, you know, congregate together and there'll be a lot of team spirit. You know, it'll be a fun team to be around. A fun team to support next season for sure. A lot of characters in there. Justin Sedgman and Jake Anderson, two young Australian reserves. Jake Anderson, I don't really know much about. He's on an assessed three point average. Don't really know much about him, but a lot of people in Birmingham are high on him. So, again, you know, a nice lineup that they've put together, but the issue I'd like to raise here is that it's not the right way to go with six Aussies and one American. No Brits in your lineup. Um, obviously, they feel that it's a good team to go with. Um, you know, the team manager needs to put together a team that he thinks will challenge for honours. And obviously, um, Mr. Drury, the team manager, um, his first name escapes me right now. Um, you know, he will think that those seven riders will bring him glory and he is a glory hogger of a manager he does want titles all the time he does want to win matches he is not really too interested in bringing through British riders and that is um, that's the end of that issue no Brits wrong way to go moving on Edinburgh are one of my picks for the title they've gone again with Ryan Fisher um, Andrew Tully and Matthew Weathers in the spine of their team Kevin Walbert um, and Max Dilger, two Germans um, who did have some part to play in their season last year, um, but didn't. Both of them didn't complete the number of matches required to um, keep an average, you know, um, 
to be given the average that they were actually on, their real time average, their averages of 7 and 3 respectively um, are assessed um, because they both didn't complete the number of matches required for their averages to stick. So that, in Edinburgh's point of view, is really good because Kevin Wilmer, um, for a lot of his time, his short time in Edinburgh last season, um, he looked like their number one. You know, they were really excited about him. So, you know, again, Edinburgh have got a lineup where you look through, and they've got a really strong, um, solid lineup, um, and they've been in the playoffs in the last few years. Um, they were the surprise packet two years ago and they've continued that and Edinburgh fans can look at that lineup and think well our run of form our run of success over the last couple of years will not come to an end um, you can really look at that lineup and think Edinburgh are going to have another really good year so good on them because you know they went through you know a few years of really not doing very much really not exciting very many fans um, and you know they're in a, they're my they're one of my picks for the titles. Um, so that's the end of part one. Coming up in part two will be um, another pick for my t um, another one of my picks for the title. Kings Lynn uh, stealing um, a Rye House rider of last year, Joe Haynes. So coming up in part two, we've got some new picks. Um, a couple more of my picks for the title in uh, Kings Lynn, Rye House, Scunthorpe um, and maybe moving on to a third part, Somerset um, and um, you know maybe a few others as well and actually no Somerset's the last pick for the title but after that I'll be moving on to some more stories so that's what we've got coming up in part two. See you there.